Right, we zeroed at 50 metres the other day. So now, clean the bolt and everything. It wasn't particularly dirty though. We're going to have a go at 100 metres. See what it groups like. Done a rough ballistics uh, workout using the factory ammo statistics or stats, specifications, whatever you want to use for them. Not really got much wind today, nice, uh, nice 100 meter target layout. I'm on my usual favourite bale. It's not the most stable thing in the world, but it's certainly good enough for this just to get me going anyway. And we're gonna put 2.4 mils on to go from 50 meters to 100 meters. So let's see how we do. Centre left on target, check my drops. Full magnification. And another soft strike. So that's clearly going to limit this, this rifle. Um, it's only a small problem to fix, but unfortunately the manufacturer needs to fix it because it just totally disrupts your, um, your shooting. Let's see if we can go with the second hit on this one. Well, I think that's shooting a little bit better, but I'm going to adjust my turrets now. I'm going to go for a, a fairly precise zero. So I think I want six clicks up. And I want probably two left. So, since the barrel's uh, accustomed to the uh, SK, in fact, no, I'll do 10 round groups. And I'll warn you in advance that if one of them does go click, I'm just simply going to recock the bolt and fire it again. Because 100% of the time, when these have gone click the first time, there's been no slow fire. I'll probably give it two or three seconds, but I don't really want to keep breaking position when I'm trying to shoot groups. It's a shame, otherwise the day is good, the wind is very, uh, very, it's very still. It can't be blown more than one meter per second maximum, and I think because I'm in a slight dip, I'm sheltered from that as it is. So we've got 10 rounds of the standard plus SK. I move on to the right hand target now, which is Slightly closer to the camera. In fact, the spare battery for the camera is dangerously close. I'm going to go for the very middle target. Ten rounds. Oh. 
yeah, you can see it's annoying me now. Okay, well that's the 10 rounds of SK done. So I'll shoot a few rounds of R50 through it just to stabilise the barrel again. Let's see how we get on with that. The last group I'm going to shoot, 100 metres, is with the R50. I'll go 10 rounds. If I lose count, I lose count. I have to just keep checking. But it's, it's, I don't know, I mean, I'm not going to make a huge issue of it, but it's annoying, it's disruptive when you get dead man's clicks. You lose count, you know, you have a natural rhythm and you sort of know when you've either got to 5 or 10. But when you're having to recock and fire two of them twice again you know you're up to 12 rounds maybe even 13 I wouldn't say the reticle in this scope was one of my favorites either it's a bit too fine for my personal preference so I'm going to go on the top left spot on the right hand target. You can hear the velocity difference because these are clearly supersonic. Have I got to 10? I have now.
So, continuing thoughts are, the R50 is supersonic at the muzzle. I'm not really mad on shooting multiple distances with supersonic ammunition because the thing is, I'll run the ballistics on it first, but that's going to drop through the transonic and subsonic regions as it flies out further. I would also say, at 100 metres, it has not shot quite as good a group as the Standard Plus SK. Both of them have thrown one flyer, but the SK, I've not got in close and looked yet, but through the scope, the SK does look to have averaged better groups. Um, that is definitely subsonic, and because it's subsonic, it's never going to go through the supersonic barrier. It's never going to get faster, um, and that will, in my opinion, give me more consistent results as I reach out further and further. Now, I've shot the SK Plus to 300 metres before with some success, in a rifle I would say is fundamentally less accurate and certainly less ergonomically suited to long distance shooting. And the scope I've got here is far more suited to longer distance shooting. Um, so if we do have a little look. So in terms of stretching the distance, this is my 100 meter zero. Um, that's at 2.3 uh, 2 miller radians. So uh, that might be a click here or a click there. I'll need to just readjust and go back to the zero stop because I have decided to change ammo back to the SK Standard Plus now. So from 2.4, we can go all the way up to uh, 22 and a half milliradians. Now, off the top of my head, that's gonna take me well beyond 300 meters. And if you give me a moment to have a little quick look at my cheat sheet here, uh, 20, milli radians is going to get me to about 350 meters. Now, that still ought to be clarified and just uh, tuned in a little bit better, but that is well worth an experiment at longer distance. But sadly, I'm going to stick with the standard SK ammunition because it's subsonic, and I think there's only so long I can carry on with it before the um, the dry, well not the dry firing, the dead man's click issue starts to annoy me a bit too much. And it's a real shame because it's a beautiful rifle, it feeds from the magazine perfectly, ejection, extraction, everything is excellent. And the stock is, well it is, it's a Bagara B14 HMR stock. It was good from the day they first made it and it's good now it's on a rimfire. I would love this rifle to be 100% reliable because although I probably wouldn't use it with that scope, I'd maybe put something on a little bit, uh, a little bit less expensive. Um, this is the rifle I think would be excellent as a cross, uh, cross condition gun. You know, you can shoot targets with it, you can go vermin hunting with it. It's superb. So let's see what, uh, let's see what I, I want to do with it. Such a shame. <laughs>